still be able to use all the services of the kernel. So basically you want to have the cake and uh, eat it too. And quite often when you want to uh, get rid of the kernel, all that noise, you need to sacrifice something. Um, you need to, to uh, have trade-offs, like uh, you are going to have more performance issues in exchange for uh, more latency, uh, more deterministic latency, for example. So I guess it's not really clear, but perhaps you remember that game where you are uh, promised a birthday cake and uh, you wander on the floor and you stumble upon that wall, which tells you that the cake is a lie. So, um, yeah, CPU isolation is a bit like that. <laughs> so, first thing you want to get rid of is uh, the task. So, um, when you want to run your uh, uh, user code without being disturbed by other tasks, so the basic first thing you want to do is to isolate all the other tasks, move them on the housekeeping CPU. So, you do that with uh, basically setting the affinity with that API, or you can use the task set, uh, task set tool. So imagine you want to run your uh, task on CPU 1, <coughs> you're just going to have to move all the other tasks to CPU 0, for example. Uh, you can also do that with the kernel threads. Um, but it only works with the kernel threads that are not pinned to specific CPUs. So, um, yeah, it works pretty much the same, except for work queues, which are special, as usual. Um, long time ago, you could just move the, the um, work queue tasks just like any kernel threads, but nowadays you have to use that interface through uh, CSFS. Um, some of the work queue work you threads use that specific flag wq csfs which lets you control all these work queues uh, into their own directory um, but you can also and it's more easy use the general case here we have a cpu mask which you can use to move all the the unbound work use to a specific uh, narrowed down set of cpu now, you are going to meet very disturbing uh, pinned work queue and kernel threads as well. And uh, to deal with them, there is no general case solution. You have to check each of these cases. Uh, you can find some help in uh, this documentation directory uh, file, kernel per CPU case threads. It's going to give you lots of information about the role of each of the, uh, well, not each, but most of the uh, kernel threads, per CPU kernel threads. Uh, for example, the threaded interrupts, case of the RQD, and RCU, because that file has been written by, uh, that documentation file has been written by Paul McKinney. So of course, you'll find tons of details about the RCU case threads, which are, there are lots of them. Now, once you have dealt with the tasks, you can deal with the RQs. So this is uh, more a uh, low level part. It's pretty easy to deal with most of them. You can uh, define the uh, affinity for each RQs if they are not per CPU again. Um, but it won't work for the RQ0, at least on x86, because this is the timer uh, RQ. So it's per CPU. This one you cannot, you cannot move. Speaking of which, timers. Um, so this is a very, okay, those are gory details <laughs> of the, uh, the timers. Uh, as you can see, if you want to see the wall chain, an interrupt fires, which is handled by the APIC handler. Then it's handled by the clock event layer. Then later, 
depending on your config, if you have a periodic uh, kernel or a high resolution one with no hertz or no hertz with low resolution, it's in the end always going to uh, down to the to run the timer queue, which takes care of all the uh, timer handlers that you have queued. And you need to affine each of these timer callbacks at a higher level. Then again, some of them are pinned per CPU and some of them are unbound. So unbound timers can be affined with uh, through a strange way using CPU set. Uh, so when you touch the scheduled load balance file, which is supposed to actually control uh, to define the CPUs you want to, to be part of the load balancing. Y is al it also works not only for tasks, but it also works for uh, unbound timers. This works as well. ISOL CPUs boot option is going to have about the same behavior, except that uh, it's frozen. Once you have defined ISOL CPUs uh, boot option, you won't be able later to, to change to change the, the set you defined there. Now, pin timers uh, are very similar to uh, unbound uh, kernel threads, for example. You need to handle each of them case by case, and there is no general rule to control them. So you need to, uh, for example, use tracing, check all the timer events that fire, and uh, <laughs> watch the code and see how you can maybe isolate these per CPU timers. So here is a, a, a practical example that's quite easy to deal with, which is the watchdog high resolution timer. Most distro uh, enable that. It's a timer that checks periodically on each CPU if there is a lockup pending somewhere, hard lockup or uh, soft lockup. And it fires uh, almost uh, yeah every eight seconds. So in order to disable it, <coughs> you need to use uh, sysctl using the kernel.watchdog CPU mask. I strongly recommend you to keep uh, at least one CPU uh, running the watchdog high resolution timer because quite often when you have a hard lookup somewhere, you are going to find it on each CPU at some point. It's, it's not always the case, but most of the time it, it applies. Or you can disable entirely. I don't advise it, but actually who cares? Uh, another example is the clock source watchdog. So this one is much trickier. Uh, I often get reported uh, disturbance based on this, on this timer. So its role is to uh, handle uh, timestamp counters on x86 when it is unstable. Um, so for example, if your BIOS fiddles with the uh, timestamp counter value, it's going to be considered unstable because its value can change randomly. Uh, and this watchdog is going to take care of that every, every two seconds, and you cannot really disable it if your TSC is considered unstable. Uh, if you want to know if your TSC is concerned, you need to check on the uh, uh, CPU flags and uh, proc CPU info for uh, the TSC reliable flag. And uh, quite often you will see the bad surprise that you are concerned. Apparently there is an exception for a uh, geod LX, whatever this is. Um, so. The only solution to solve that, to get rid of that uh, timer, is to change your hardware. Or you can also sacrifice a co and uh, use the boot option TSC reliable, which I strongly not advise, but I use it myself only for testing, but I wouldn't use it for production because, well, your uh, timer source is going to behave randomly, so you are warned. TSC what?
It does. Yeah, it works. What's the name already? Uh, I think it's PHP no, no Watchdog. Oh, No Watchdog. Okay, never tried. Okay. But that's pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Or is it, yeah? It basically does uh, the early PHP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, right. And uh, the most interesting timer, which is the tick, uh, this one has a specific treatment as well, which is called no hertz. So you, I guess you have heard uh, of it. Uh, no hertz uh, is there for a long while. It was there uh, in the beginning to um, avoid consuming energy while the CPU is running in idle mode. And now you can also enable it uh, when you run a user space task uh, alone, right? And when you only run, well, when you mostly run user space code and you don't want that task to be disturbed by the tick, you can use no hertz full. So it switches from 100 to 1000 hertz to zero, but it never comes for free. Uh, you're going to meet lots of throughput penalties uh, due, for example, to the tick reprogramming overhead. So every time you will meet um, an RQ, the tick is going to be reprogrammed in the end of the, uh, of the RQ. But at the same time, when you run no hertz, you should have isolated most of your RQs. So it should not be a real problem. Same goes for uh, context switches. If you run only one task in user space, you should not be disturbed by uh, the, the throughput penalties in context switch. But sometimes, uh, well, if you have a real-time task competing with, uh, with a fair task, not really competing, but if it's interrupt sometimes a fair task, you can use no hertz as well, but you will have those context switches penalties. Well, actually, only if you use POSIX CPU timers. So it's actually a very uninteresting detail. Most of the time. Uh, okay. Yep. If you are given uh, um, a machine that you didn't configure yourself, you know, uh, n not you, you don't know the kernel configuration, you didn't build it yourself, and you want to see um, how, how many ticks are in this uh, machine, like uh, if it's uh, periodic or mm -hmm. not very periodic, whatever, how would you trace for that? What uh, uh, would you look for? Is there a, a function that you would uh, trace? Uh, trace the high resolution timer. And if you see one per uh, millisecond, for example, which is a tick sket tick sket 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 timer or something? No, no okay. Is this to, to trace the H uh, high resolution timer? Yeah, so it's only in the high resolution case, but which Without the covers the most of it. One you can always trace is what we have for counting runtime. Yeah. Um, and that gets called from a bunch of places, but when you see it with a fairly round time, yeah. it is the tick. If you uh, see each every millisecond yeah, or, or every, every or whatever you are. Yeah, whatever you hertz value okay. is. And there is another function called something like scheduler tick or is That's this one. Yeah. Tick sket. I don't recall exactly the name. Tick sket handler. Uh, yeah. But in my uh, When I describe your, your When I describe your patch um, during the talk um, I said this happens at the tick, and uh, I wanted to see uh, how many times it get called. And uh, remember a function called scheduler tick. Yeah. And is that the uh, high resolution timer you were mentioning, Fred? Yeah. Or yeah. It's, it's a different one. It's a different one. That's the, that, that, if you remember Frederick's diagram, like three yeah. slides back, of all the things it's the that back end. The tick. Can you go three slides back? Yeah. So in most cases, you should see 
that configuration, which is high resolution timer with uh, no hertz. Okay. So HR timer interrupt calls, and there I don't remember the name, but it's a big cat. There's a whole forest of functions below that. Yeah. Yeah. One of them runs timer callback queues, one of them does process user account, whatever. Um, and you eventually also call schedule. Okay, okay, so I would be in the middle path. In the yeah, m most yeah, of the yeah, time. Depends on the setting. Yeah, it depends on the setting. You'll get to that, path. You'll get to that path via one of those paths. Okay. Okay, thanks. Let me just check the name of the uh, kernel time. Takes get HR timer. <laughs> Okay, it's Tixcat Timer, the name of the handler. Tick. Tixcat Timer. But it could be Ticknohertz handler if this is the uh, yeah, this case. Now the reason I'm asking is because I thought that I had a tickless kernel and I was expecting to see, at least on some CPU, no tick at all. But I saw some. Mm -hmm. And, and check the tick stop uh, trace points. Well, so Yeah, exactly. Like one every yeah. And this is because we use a HPET thirty-two, and this overflows. Ah. I've tried using the HPET sixty-four once, but that came apart mightily. Okay. Because Windows doesn't use that hardware, so it's well validated. <laughs> In fact, I, the what I was spooked because I traced for like uh, twenty seconds, and I saw like I don't know, ten of those. Yeah, okay. so, so yes. that's an x86 issue. Um, many of the other architectures that have saner timer architectures. Okay. So it's sort of a glitch, like it's not intended. Maybe due to this one. Yeah, you do. Uh, uh, uh. For, for that's the x86 issue. Okay. Spark, for example, they can go fully idle for forever. Okay. Um, and then uh, Dave Miller reported, that, yeah, <coughs> this broke. And I'm like, but for this to happen, you need to be idle for like hours. Okay. He says, yes. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. It's more because it didn't fit my model, so I didn't. That's not a it's problem for me. Nothing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, with the A peak, you need uh, you need to s something to avoid the wrap up of the uh -huh, timekeeping. Uh -huh, okay, so, okay, okay. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Speaking about the no hertz requirements, um, you need on to have only one task running, and well, you can play games between uh, RT and fair task to uh, to have more than one task running, but just Keep in mind that that rule, it's the, the, the simplest one, and I guess it, it covers most of the use cases. Yes, except with the best uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> that pass there's material no, for you to come again dig. next year and talk about <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. top of yeah. the, the good news. So, so <laughs> the fix there is to then force the performance um, governor mm -hmm. um, and then teach this thing to not... Uh, well, on the other end, if the task is continuously running, so maybe it's run at the... I guess yeah, so, so no hertz is typically uh, well, performance. So no. yeah, yeah, so what I'm saying is that... It runs out of the tick. 
so most of the time. But 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 you know, if, if there is only one task and no task switches and nothing, then it will not run. So you don't have to care about it. In in principle. Principle, yeah. So you probably you should you don't need it, right? It's like if you have it isolated it. Anyway, yeah, you know, well enough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you'll want performance to be set anyway. Yeah. Right. Get stuck in, in any other, case. Oh yeah, you, 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 that, that thing, yes. Mm. So don't use any frequency scanning mm. because it's stupid if you have a single class. And if it's used, I guess no hertz, uh, full no hertz is used most of the time by uh, real time. So maybe you don't yeah. want to. Real time and HPC. And HPC like also, so yeah, yeah. They'll probably use performance. Anyway. Yeah, performance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. That's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you have to remember that modern Intel CPUs, all if you if you select anything from the turbo range, they are they have a license to go up to the highest level. Right? Oh okay. So. So you cannot you actually. Choose the frequency below the turbo range for this, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. And then you okay. Yeah. okay. So you're not in turbo and you're safe and it doesn't spike up. Yeah, the well, so there is one more subtlety, which is that on desktops the processors, there is something called uh, uh, the turbo activation ratio, which is below the warranted frequency, and you have to be below that to avoid the turbo range. Okay. And it is difficult That's to discover. Oh, well, yes. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I, I'm stating that this is a fact statement, you yeah. know, it's not like... Okay. Uh, okay. So about no hertz requirement, also avoid kernel entries altogether. If you don't want to risk arming any asynchronous kernel code, such as work use timers, case thread, and all the things we we talked about before. Um, so when I mention a lamp to sacrifice. Uh, it refers to one CPU you need to keep out of the no hertz full uh, set because you want a CPU to handle all the unbound work, uh, such as unbound kernel threads, unbound timers, and work use. And uh, so this is a place where you want to offline everything. And also, uh, you need it to handle the timekeeping to make the time progress, uh, the GFEs and uh, GTOD uh, time. To avoid what? Yeah, also, also. Ah, yeah, also. <laughs> yes, this is, uh, yeah, to, to keep the the time uh, coherency yeah, between CPUs. Yeah. But in the end, you will have a one hertz last mosquito, which is going to buzzing around your ear. And uh, there is one, one per CPU, but all of them are offloaded to the housekeeping CPU. So you're going, for example, if you have like 100 CPUs and you use CPU zero as the housekeeper, it's going to handle one hertz remotely for all of these CPUs on behalf of them. So CPU zero is going to be very busy uh, while the rest can enjoy running user space. So this is why the cake is uh, actually a lie because you have lots of trade-off if you want to run no hertz, no hertz full, but it can fit on some very specific use cases only. And in the end, of course, you want to take care of synchronous current code, avoid uh, syscalls most of the time, uh, to the point that some people have re-implemented uh, user space TCP UDP stacks because they wanted to avoid all the noise that come from the networking kernel stack. Um, so that's, for example, one way to deal with that. Kind of extreme, but if it works, yeah. Uh, 
not only because uh, syscalls can take whatever amount of time, but also because it runs asynchronous code. Of course, exceptions. So it's pretty much like real time. Uh, if you want to avoid page faults, you need to lock the, uh, the, the memory area you don't want to fault. And of course, all the uh, single step breakpoints, but you don't want to debug uh, code you want to isolate, right? So in the future, uh, we want, I would like a unified interface because as you can see, all these, um, uh, all these isolation features are driven, uh, some of them by CSFS, some of them by PROCFS, some of them through CPU sets. So it would be nice to have a single uh, unified interface for that. Uh, I tried to uh, extend uh, no hertz pool to move it to ISOL CPUs, but uh, for no, it's draft very well, it's very dirty for now. Uh, ideally, I would like to unify everything around CPU set, uh, mostly around SCAD load balance, which behaves the same as ISOL CPUs, just you can modify in the runtime the set of CPUs you want to isolate. Um, <coughs> and currently, it also works not only for tasks, for work use, but also for timers but it doesn't work for per CPU uh, timers and threads that you want to isolate. So it would be nice to have that. And also to uh, drive no hertz, we could use as well. That's uh, maybe not scheduled load balance, but another file, I don't know. Um, and also that ISOL CPU boot option is very annoying because, like I said, you cannot modify its value on the runtime. So it would be nice to um, also m be able to modify it through CPU set scheduled load balance, which plays around the same role. Who? I haven't seen. Recent one? Okay, I haven't seen that. Yeah? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One solution could be to uh, have a CPU set mount point, mount point after the boot called ISOL CPUs, where you can perhaps control the ISOL CPUs boot option. That's an idea. Or we could modify the root C group uh, CPU set value, but that's not really proper. So, so, so one is came up with, with a rather nice um, solution, but I forgot the exact details. Um, I'm going to check that. We'll yeah, I, I think he basically didn't exclude variable for the, C, the CPU set feature. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. But it only works for CPU to be two. Mm. So, for example, is if C group V two is not built in, so you still have the uh, ISO CPU special case around the domain code, right? Yeah. Okay, but that's yeah could be a way to have that. Okay, questions? More? I lost you. <laughs> yeah, so the overhead of what? Mm, I don't know how much it takes, maybe a few. Is it a micros? No, I guess nano some nanoseconds? Uh, actually, some more. What, what microseconds, actually. What, what, what's your timer? Like the oh yeah, of course. Time yeah, it depends on the clock time. source. That depends. Clock yeah. event source. Yeah, there, are they, there are different times for lights. But mostly on x86, they're all frame trapped. 
And not only that, but all the computing to, to check when is the next deadline to program. So there is that, the uh, architecture overhead and the... Uh, so some and people wanted the signal when no was filing. Did that ever get... Oh, signal? yeah. I haven't heard recent news about that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Last patch was uh, more than one year ago. Yeah. Uh, for them, it was a hard error to ever get out of modules. Yeah, 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 exactly. That was a hard requirement, and they couldn't live with a, a single disturbance. And so, yeah, they wanted a way to have a signal to know when uh, they are interrupted. Yeah. But haven't seen recent patches. Okay. Mm, yeah. Right? Coffee time? Okay, thank you.